Hey everybody, Carl Schuff here from creativecodingclub.com and today I just want to welcome you to my big Thanksgiving Black Friday sale kickoff, all right? It's pretty much the best time to buy my courses and I want to give you a little taste of what we do each week here, okay? I often say, hey, you know what, you get over 250 lessons and every week there's a new one and I know it's kind of hard to know what exactly does that mean. So what I'm going to do today is show you just a little snippet of a recent lesson that's three parts, but we're going to do just a little middle part. I'll give you the finished file, don't worry. And at the end, I'll show you a little bit more of what we do on a weekly basis here, all right? So sit back, watch. First five minutes, we're going to go over this little lesson and then a little wrap up at the end, all right? So stick around. I'll see you then. We spent the last two weeks exploring this UI initiative logo animation where these borders are moving around the logo and they're revealing this nice gradient, okay? We took a look at how they were built on this side using divs and CSS animations and we've been rebuilding it using GSAP and SVG. So we're up to the point now where we have two strokes that are animating around and they're sort of overlaid on top of each other and we worked out how we can build a function to do that and now it's time to add the gradient masking effect. Now to do that we're going to highlight a really cool feature of Boxy SVG which allows us to open up an SVG from code in our clipboard. So I'm just going to select the SVG code that we have here, copy it out, jump on over to Boxy SVG and go to File, New from Clipboard. A new tab opens up and here we have our two rectangles. Now it just looks like one red rectangle here, but remember they're overlaid on top of each other. If we go into the Objects panel, you'll see that we do in fact have two rectangles. And of course we can also go to the Elements panel and see all of the raw SVG code where we have Rect1 and Rect2. And we have a rectangle with a red stroke sitting on top of a rectangle that we really can't see with a white stroke. Now with that out of the way, I wanna start creating my gradient to be masked. So for now, I'm going to hide my two rectangles by just clicking on the little hidden icon here. I'm gonna to go to the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this. I'm going to get rid of its stroke by using the stroke panel, deleting the stroke, and for the fill, I'm going to select a linear gradient, use the edit tool, and I want my gradient to go from a blue color, so we'll select a blue right around here, to a purple. So for the ending gradient color, let's just go over to a purple color, something like that. And that looks nice and certainly good enough for now. I'm just going to move this end point over here to the right and we'll move the starting point over here to the left. Using a tool like this is so much easier than hand coding. Now I need this gradient to cover the entire document so I'm just going to go into my geometry panel, click on the document, you'll see that we're at a width of 200 and a height of 200. So for this right here, I'm going to zero out the X and Y and set the width to 200 and the height to 200. Beautiful. With that out of the way, I'm now going to group my strokes so that they can act as a mask on this gradient. So we'll hop back over to the objects panel. I'm going to reveal both of these and I'm going to select the white rectangle and shift click on the red one and do a command G to group them together. And now here comes a slightly tricky part. I'm going to select my gradient rectangle, hold down shift and click on the grouped strokes. I'm going to go over to the compositing panel and click on mask. Ooh! And now you'll see that we only see the gradient behind the stroke that we had. It looks like it's working quite well. Now you may notice that things are a bit faded out. We'll get to that in a moment. For now, I'm just going to select the code in the Elements panel by right-clicking and selecting Copy Outer SVG. I'm going to hop back into my code pen demo. I'm going to get rid of all of the code that we had before and paste in the new SVG code. And now we have the gradient reveal, all right? Isn't that beautiful? The answer is yes, but you may notice that things do seem a little bit faded out. 
Well, the reason for that is that when we're using a mask, it really depends what colors are in the mask. When dealing with masks, pixels behind the white shapes will come through at 100% opacity. So what we want to do is make sure we don't have white and red, all right? That red stroke isn't allowing all of the pixels to come through at their full opacity. So what we're going to do is change the red stroke to a white stroke. And now here you go. This is exactly the way it's supposed to look. So we didn't have to deal with any of the JavaScript code at all here. We just did some of the things we've been doing before in Boxy SVG. Everything updates and it looks beautiful. So there's always a case to be made for using a tool like Boxy to edit our SVG stuff to make things like gradients and masks. But if I wanna just change around a stroke color, hey, we'll just edit the SVG code. So hopefully you enjoyed this little masking tip and I wanna show you some other things we've been studying in this SVG course and others. Here you'll see this beautiful flower animation by Anya Melnick. It's absolutely exquisite. And I always tell my students, hey listen, I'm not a world-class designer. I can't make flowers as beautiful as this. But what I can do is show you how to use a tool like Boxy SVG here to design a simple flower like this. How to draw it with all the different art tools that Boxy gives you. And then I can also show you how to animate it on scroll. As I scroll down, you'll see that the SVG comes into view. It gets pinned and then I can scrub through the animation of the different parts of the flower, all right? And I always say, if you wanna build the fancy stuff, you gotta start with the simple stuff. I love little lessons like this motion path follower that show you how to get multiple elements following a path. And then we also go ahead and create something like this, where all the dots are generated dynamically, they're following this blob shape and they're scaling up and down and we're programmatically assigning colors. It's all stuff I'll walk you through step by step. And another fun lesson we did recently was this simpler isometric animation that used some SVG masking and sort of focused on the GSAP timeline sequencing fundamentals. Again, I want all my students to be able to look at something like this and know how they would design it and code it. And I love exploring sites like this DevEb site where we have content pinned on the right and content that scrolls on the left. And as we scroll, the content on the right sort of gets revealed with a mask effect. And when we're all done, the pinning is going to stop and we'll see the rest of the page. Now with effects like this, you have to build it so that it works in this sort of desktop mode. And of course, we also need to make things responsive. So you'll see that as this window gets smaller here, we scroll down, all of these projects are going to be in a single column, all right? Now again, I'm not a pro designer and I like to keep things simple. So I'm gonna build something like this for you where the layout is dead simple with just a few elements and we can still get the same basic effect with quarter of the CSS and HTML so we can really focus on the GSAP code and scroll trigger. And yes, I'm going to show you how to make your layout like this responsive so that when we go down to a smaller screen, it will automatically adjust to a single column. And when you go wide again, you're going to get two columns. All right. Awesome. And to wrap up, here's a lesson that combines scroll trigger with draw SVG, okay? You'll see that as these Formula One countries come into view, their tracks then animate. And so what I'm doing here is I'm vertically scrolling up and down the page to trigger elements animating horizontally. And again, you'll see that each track animates into view. And again, we make this responsive by allowing us to go down to a very small screen size and it still all works, okay? A uh, lot goes into this to figure out how to scale the text so that we can read the track names fully left to right. When we have a long track name like Great Britain, you'll see that it fits in pretty much all right. And it's gonna work at this sort of narrow size and it's also gonna work when it's super wide, okay? In lessons like this, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how everything is built. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour. I don't wanna keep you much longer, but I do want you to know that I worked at Greensock back when this was their logo, okay? I was there when they started transitioning from Flash to JavaScript, and 
I was learning most of these tools before documentation even existed, all right? So I'm just creating lessons that I wish I had when I was learning this stuff, all right? I've taught thousands of developers how to master the basics of GSAP and use all their special tools, all right? I've been doing this for over 10 years, and uh, although the lessons might not always be the prettiest or the fanciest, I really want you to master the fundamentals so that when you see effects online, you can say, hey, you know what? I know what tools I need to build that, all right? So there's this old saying that says, if you wanna learn how to build a house, grab a hammer and follow a home builder around for six months. Well, through my Creative Coding Club courses, that's basically what I'm allowing you to do, okay? I want you to jump in, do the lessons just a little bit each week, and you'll have an opportunity to see just how I would build these things, all right? I'll show you step by step. We'll look at the CSS, the HTML. I'll teach you some basic JavaScript tricks along the way. You don't have to be a front end expert for this stuff, all right? I'm gonna keep it simple, but you're gonna be amazed at the results if you put in the time. So I welcome you to check out these courses and discover the joy of animating with code. See you in the club.